Okay, hello everyone. Uh, Professor Dustin here, and this video is going to be about how to add a WCS to your Astro MSJ images that you get from my telescope. The idea here is that actually the process does not always work, uh, and so we just have to maybe mess around, maybe get a little bit lucky, and maybe just give up. So WCS is a world coordinate system. It tells um, it tells the image where on the sky it is. So let me pull up one that actually has a WCS. This one does. You can see the top of the image, you have a bunch of information here. Then you have WCS equals RA, DEC, TAN, CT, matrix. That means there is a WCS in the image. That means as I move my cursor around, you can see the RA and DEC right here. So the image X, image Y, that's just a pixel in the image. But you can see the RA and DEC moves around. So that means that the, the computer knows, or the asteroid is J knows, where I'm pointing in the image. Those are the exact coordinates. Um, on the sky. So that allows you to do things like stacking because then you can align the image on top of each other and stack them. Here, this is the uh, uh, image of a supernova in the uh, U filter. U is a very dark filter, so you sometimes do not even get enough light for the automatic WCS system to work. And you can see that's what happened. This is no WCS, no world coordinate system. So as I move around the image, the pixels up here change because the pixels are just reading from the image. But there's no RA index. So this has no idea where on the sky we're pointing. That's bad. There is a way, a relatively simple way of getting uh, Astro MSJ to actually find out the WCS. It's time consuming and it sometimes just blatantly fails. So I'll try to show you a couple of tricks to get the WCS. First thing you want to know is you want to know about what the right answer is. We know what source we're looking at. We know about where the center of this image is. And actually, I telescope's really good at pointing at places in the sky. I'm basically completely convinced that the dead center of this image is the right coordinate. But because the sky is curved and the surface of the optical plane is flat, there's actually distortions that happen between the sky and the image. So that's actually what we're going to figure out or let, I hope the computer's going to figure out for us. But I know what I'm supposed to be pointed at. I'm supposed to be pointed at this source, uh, uh, this source right here, which uh, is over in the transient name server. I know exactly what its uh, RA and DEC are supposed to be. They're right there. So what I can do is I can go over here and go to plate solve using astronomy.net. Uh, under the W, yeah, sorry, with options, because we're going to have to put some stuff in. So you can get your own account if you want to. Go to novaastronomy.net, set up a free account. It's free, fine. Uh, you can also just use my user key if you prefer. So you can just enter this obnoxious user key, G, but yeah, those are all letters. So there's no numbers in there. So if you want to just pause the video and grab that user key, that's fine. Um, or you can make your own account. So what this is going to do is it's going to search and try to identify where the stars are in the image and then give us a WCS. Uh, the reason I want to get the RA deck is there's this option down here, constrained sky location, where we can type in exactly what we think the center of this image is. And you can see I'm just going to type in what I have here, 10, 50, 45. I usually leave off decimal points because it's going to do a search anyway. So being super accurate, it's probably not actually worth it. Uh, plus 25, 11, 39. Let's round up to 40. <clears throat> Radius, uh, you know, you could maybe play around with that a little bit or not. Uh, let's see, other things we want to, we want to make sure to skip images with WCS because and we want to, so if, if an image in a sequence has a WCS, don't calculate it, just skip it, cool. Autosave, I usually like to leave the autosave on because we have backups of these images, so if we screw up something, we can always go grab the other one, so I like to do that. So I, this is how I have all mine checked, you can do that if you like. Um, we will play around with various of these options if we think we need to, but for the moment, I'm going to leave it like this, I'm going to start. And this is going to take some time, and I'll wait until the log. Actually, I think I'm just going to pause the recording because this actually takes like three or four minutes. So I'll pause it, and then we'll come back to see what the result of the process was. Okay, so we've got our first response from the server failure. So astrometry, the astrometry is a term for position analysis and astronomy submission. Timed out for slice one. So it tried to find it. It took too long. That's what timed out means, resubmitting. So the timeout is something like two minutes, and it took two minutes, and it failed. So my anticipation is that I will have three more messages just like that. It will try twice on slice one. It will try twice on slice two, and then it will just give up completely. So I'm going to pause the video. I assume that is what's going to happen. Okay, and you can see my prediction was uh, turned out to be true. We have a failure for slice one resubmitting. Slice one was unsuccessful for two tries, skipping image twice for image two, and failure. So let's go back to the WCS finder, place all with options, and see what else we can do to try to catch, to try to figure out what image this is. Now I want to check the RA and deck. There was a little bit of strange behavior because normally it 
normally what happens is when you click it, a bunch of circles show up in the image that shows you where the sources are that you're finding. I didn't see that happen. So um, I think what I'd like to do sometimes, so let me tell you a few things about how the WCS fails. Sometimes the stars are too bright and they're saturated. And that, that can be a problem because it prevents other stars from being found around the saturated one. But this image, down here is a histogram of all of the uh, account, you know, which pixels have how many counts in them. And the whole scale is the full scale of the image. And you can see most of the counts are at the low side. So that means we don't have a lot of counts up at the saturated side. We do have a couple, so that's a little worrying. Maybe that's this stuff down here. There does seem to be some excess um, leading stars down here that could be screwing us up. But it does not seem to be too many up there. I guess I'll try it. So limit max peaks means limit all counts above a certain level. You can see the highest one is 25. And these ones are, are not going to be, these have, guys have got to be copy grays, I would think. If I just pick out some, some things that are apparently actually stars, you can see the total number of counts is like 8,000. Oh, no, the peak is 21,000. So that's interesting. So actually, and I want that. You can see, as I shift back to the image, the circle things are the ones that don't move. Those are the actual stars, not the hot pixels and stuff. So, okay, so that's a real star. That's at 20,000, so I don't want to limit too much. That's the brightest thing I see in the image, I think. Yeah, see, this stuff is maybe what, what's killing it. Yeah, so the, it might be the brightest one I see in the image, so maybe I will limit to 25,000. Uh, that's the limit here. I don't know, maybe this is not worth it, but let's try it. Median filter, I've had some experience playing with the median filter. Usually you want to, yeah, that sort of like gets rid of some of the hot pixels sometimes. So I guess let's try the median filter. I usually set it a little bit lower to two. Um, let's try this. And I'm going to look carefully to see when I started to see if I get the green circles in my image that I expect to see. So let's start this again. Oh, because the circles are not finding any stars. Oh, it did find that one, but the number is very, very small. So I expect this is going to fail again. So I'll pause the uh, video. We'll come back to it and see if that's actually what happened. And you can see it failed again. So here's the same uh, failure, processing, resubmitting, skipping, resubmitting, resubmitting, failure. failure. Um, it's interesting that this one got resubmitting instead of timing out. So maybe we made a little bit of progress, but still not great. So. I have only one more idea, and that is when you go to WCS plate solve, you can actually specify this thing called constrained plate scale. So that says that you know how many, uh, how you know how big a pixel is on the sky measured in arc seconds, and it's always in arc seconds. Um, so because I have another set of images from the same telescope, I actually know what that is, assuming that I can find it in my telescope. That is occasionally a little bit tricky. So I'm going to go over to the image where I actually have the WCS. I'm going to go and click this button. This is a header file. So every FITS image comes with this huge header file, which contains like all these keywords um, to tell you various things about the who, who took the app. Yeah, let me just click it to show you. You know, so all kinds of stuff. Some stuff about the data, duration of the exposure. Um, eye telescope's name should be in here. The object name is in here. So somewhere in here, there should be um, the approximate pixel scale. And it shouldn't be the approximate pixel scale, it should be the actual pixel scale. So I'm just sort of scanning through right there. Degree per pixel. Okay, that is not exactly what I want. I want the arc second per pixel. I can convert that. Okay, it looks like it's not giving me the arc second, it's giving me the degree, but that is okay. Is it the same for X and Y? You can see it's 4.54, 4.54, that's very close. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit of trickery here. Uh, we can just directly convert this thing. Now, of course, degrees and arc seconds either uh, difference by units of 60, so I could just do this. Uh, anyway, but let's just do it this way for purposes of demonstration. Uh, e to the minus four. Is that going to give me the right thing? Yes. So I think what this thing is trying to tell me is that the pixel scale is uh, 1.6344. And so let's try putting that in for our uh, WCS pixel scale. So WCS plate. Nope, that's the one that has the uh, WCS. It's without the WCS. 
it solves enable. You can see that the other one that I was using was 1.9, so 1.6344. You know, I don't know what tolerance to use. I probably should use a different tolerance than that, but oh well. Okay, let's just try this. And again, I'm going to push go. I'm going to check the image, make see what it says about the circles. Still not many circles. When we constrain the arc second, arcs, the um, plate scale will make the process shorter. Uh, so I'm going to pause again, and we'll come back and see how, how it went. And another failure. You can see it failed twice. Right again, failed twice. So the fact that it's not timing out makes me think that the thing is actually finding stars and the thing is just working. There's just not enough stars in the image. So probably we should know that T11 filter U requires longer exposure time. Because if this was a 600 second exposure, we wouldn't have to do the stacking. Right, we could just take the observation as it is, just 600 seconds, same exposure time as stacking two 300s. Um, so I'm gonna now, I'm gonna now show you a workaround, which will work for us because what we are interested in is uh, just what's happening at the center of the image. Now, of course, I hope this workaround works. That's what workarounds are for. We'll see. So I want, first want to clean clean off the uh, apertures here. So I'll click that button, do that. We see some stars. Now I don't see a ton of stars. One there, one there. There's one over there. I, all the dots are hard to sell. You can flick between them to tell which ones are cosmic ray hits and which ones are stars. Those are stars. Those are the same stars in either image. So if I just tell Astro Image J that they are the same stars, then Astro Image J will go, oh, look, I can line them up that way. So this will be better in the center of the image than away from the, uh, at the outside of the image, but we want the center. So uh, I'm going to try to do this this way. So um, the other images are already stacked. I did that in the other video. I'm going to do this now, just stack these two images on top of each other doing this way. So I'm going to align the stacks using WCS for apertures, but I can't use WCS because we don't have one. So I'm going to go to, uh, I think, single step mode. One click set for aperture in each image. Yeah, so I haven't, I have no previous apertures. I don't have an RAM deck. I don't want to change the apertures. I think this is what I want. I want to turn on the help section, see what I want to do. Okay, so I've got a little help window up here. Add target star aperture T1, left click. So I've got the super bright star here. It doesn't want to left click on that guy. Add more reference star apertures or delete apertures, left click. So uh, so if I can delete the, the one I just placed if I want, but I want to add more. So I'm going to just keep left clicking on stars that I see. And I'm only going to do three because I only see three that are super bright to me. Uh, I see a bunch more. So maybe if you want to do a good job, you could do more. I've set those three apertures. Now I want to click enter, I think. Enter, finalize aperture selection, align the image, and move to the next image. So I'm going to do that, click Enter. And now I'm going to have to select those same three stars again. One. Yeah, so because I selected one click, I just click the first one. The other one's auto-populated. Virtual stack image complete. Align images saved in a subdirectory. OK, cool. Let's try to stack them. OK, so that was. So for the purposes of this video, which is trying to show you how to deal with the WCS, I showed you a bunch of ways of dealing with it, which all failed, and then one way which should have succeeded. So um, I just want to check that image to see that it actually kind of worked. So go into the align. The U is the problem one. So I just want to open all the U's. It's funny, there are, di there are vastly different brightnesses. That's kind of troubling. But you can see that it's a line, right? All these various stars with their most little tiny dots are sitting on top of each other. So that's ready to be stacked. Um, so now I'm going to go over the other thing that I was doing to actually do the stacking. But that's the end of this video. So the idea is showing you how to maybe try to get the WCS if it takes some time. If it fails, you might be able to just stack them using the alignment, um, the aperture alignment. OK, so thanks for watching this. I'm going to go back and finish the other video. I hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you later.